So on this episode, Missy and I are talking about illusions. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace, and I'm Chris, joined by my co-host Missy, and today we're going to be looking at illusions. This is the podcast where we talk about practical, everyday tips to finding our inner peace, finding our happiness, and, you know, what we can just do every day uh, to do that. So, jumping right in. How are you doing, Missy? I see all the nice palm trees and I know, right? sunshine. I'm outside for the first time because it started to get cool enough that I'm not sweating through everything that I own uh, to, to be outside. But um, yeah, no, things are really good. Um, a lot of things are progressing in our lives, so that's good. Um, I actually get to go pick up my niece tomorrow. So um, that's all coming to a head. And for those of you who don't know, my, uh, my sister's daughter will be coming to live with me, and she's 12 years old. So we're super excited about that. How about you guys, Chris? Yep. What's new with you? Well, I've got, got some stuff going on, and I do uh, apologize for the helicopter. That's been circling overhead since we started, and I don't know why. Um, but no, a lot of good things going on and uh, have a new grandbaby and uh, one of my kids has moved closer to where I am. So it's all good stuff when it comes to uh, being with family and being close to family. So Absolutely. really excited about all that. That's awesome. So, so excited to hear about it. So yeah. Before we, we got on this call, you, you started to mention some of the things that you, you talk to your clients about illusions. I was wondering if you might want to elaborate on that for our listeners. So I, I, I love this topic uh, of illusions, and we're not going to be talking about magic illusions, <laughs> but in a sense, yeah. real illusions, if you can use the phrase real illusions, um, no, I, I notice in my clients and myself, I mean, I'll, I'll admit to that, but how often we tend to think about our lives or our futures and we tend to predict them in worse ways than what they are. Absolutely. You know, so we tend to look at what's happening and not just look at it from the negative, but here's the illusion part we imagine that it's even worse yeah so it could be going pretty bad but then we'll even make it worse or it's going fairly well and then we'll make it worse yeah, and I, I think so that's the same thing i kind of share with my clients is that we're meaning making machines you know really all events are neutral in our lives whether it's you know uh, my parents got a divorce i had to file bankruptcy whatever it is and we make up the embarrassment the the ridicule the sadness the you know we make that stuff up it is our experience and we have that right but at the same time you know if you stay neutral on certain things then then you won't always have the illusion part of the story right yep well, and that's why I love when you look at the definition of mindfulness, uh, you know, when mindfulness talks about, you know, looking at our feelings and what's happening around us non-judgmentally, mm -hmm. you know, so that we don't do exactly what you just said, you know, that we just take it at face value and then we can respond to that face value, you know, and instead of creating this illusion of, of what, you know, I think is going on or, you know, for the future, because we just don't know. Um, you know, I, I have a recent client now who's going through a breakup and, you know, that that's something that, you know, they're lamenting on, you know, well, well, did the person ever mean what they told me? Right. And, you know, I, I have to remind them that all we can go on is the facts. And the fact is, they said those things through the course of your relationship. 
So why are we going to assume any different? Because yeah, we don't and, know. And, you know, we, we have that tendency to uh, take our past and predict our future, right? And, and so uh, reliving the past over and over again, those are the stories that we, we kind of trudge forward with in the future. So what I would say, you know, also your, uh, your client is that, you know, it, at that point, it probably was very well intended and, and you know, honest, yep. but, you know, feelings change, feelings change all the time. And exactly. so it's actually, you know, taking that into account, you can actually change the feelings that you have about your past stories to help you be in a better place in the future. Which, again, is part of that illusion of what gets in, in our way a lot when, you know, we then take that project that the future is going to be way worse. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's one of the techniques in cognitive behavioral work that I use with the clients. And, you, you know, anybody can do this on their own. But, you know, I ask the question, so what is the worst case scenario? You know, if something oh, were yeah. to happen in the future, what <laughs> is the worst case? And then let's play that out. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and I'm like giggle because, uh, you know, I went through a form of training at one point in my life where they did that. And it was like, you know, OK, well, I'm, I'm going to be homeless. OK, oh, well, what happens after that? Well, then we become a drug addict. And then what happens after that? Well, well, then I, I, I find all these feral cats and I'm a crazy cat lady and, and I talk to myself. And well, what happens after that? You know, and it's like it's funny because it's like you start to realize that in doing that, you are making up those illusions. You are making up what's really going to happen and trying to predict the outcome. And, uh, and then you begin to laugh about it. And, mm -hmm. and so, it, you know, you take yourself a lot less seriously um, in doing things like that. So I love that you brought that up, Chris. I think that's, that's a wonderful idea. And not a lot of people would probably find as much humor as I just did in it, but but, it it all know, depends on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you, that's that's what it's about. It's about you know having fun and figuring out a way to to kind of break your your thought pattern, you know, and and interrupt right. it. And um, one one of the other parts of illusions, and I don't know if you would consider this the same or different, but you know, um, when I when I think of other illusions, are the things that trigger us also in life. You know, mm -hmm. like the things that are, yes. um, you know, uh, well, that lady cut me off in traffic or, you know, um, you know, I didn't like the way that man looked at me or, you know, whatever it is. But those are the things that, you know, those are also illusions. That's our ego, you know, trying to keep us safe, you know, stay in control, be right and look good, you know, which ends up being none of those. We don't we don't ever have control. We don't we're not we're not really right. Uh, we never look mm -hmm. good when we when we uh, react on it. And, you know, and and definitely out of my comfort zone if I'm if I'm acting out, you know, so, um, you know, I, I like that we we have two different ways to look at this and, and how illusions really kind of can play out in our lives. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, we, we need to get rid of our emotion side. No. But, you know, we do need to also realize the difference between what is our emotion, our illusion, and the fact of what's really happening. So, and I know perception is reality, but, would you, you know, would try you, to take those out. Would you say that the best way to kind of start to uh, take baby steps towards that is through observing? Definitely through observing. And again, in that mindful way that I'm going to observe it without judging it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if I'm feeling a certain way, feel it. Don't try to look at that and say, well, this is right, wrong. Should I feel this? Shouldn't I? You do it. And then you can figure out, do I want to keep doing this? Yeah. And then, you know, you, you can make changes based off of that. Or to look at that reality of what's going on minus the feeling and just sit with that. And um, then you can figure out what am I going to do next? I think also one of the things that when I'm observing, one of the best things that I do is question, how is this serving me? 
you know, and, uh, you know, if it is that I got ticked off, you know, how is that serving me? Is it serving me that I'm aware of something that, you know, is, is inside of me that needs to be healed? Or is it serving me by showing me that my ego's at this point in control? Or is it serving me to learn a higher lesson or elevate myself to a higher and better place? Um, mm-hmm. So living in the question is, through your observations is also, I think, uh, something that I would recommend to anybody because we don't always know what things are for. And the True. instincts and the guidance that we receive, um, I feel when you're in the question, you'll find the answer. Always in your experience, always in, you know, either internally or externally, you'll always find the answer. Mm-hmm. And, and we can't be afraid of those questions, especially the questions we don't yet have an answer to. Yeah. And that's what I think messes a lot of people up because, you know, they're, they're always saying to me, but I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Oh, yeah, no. We want to know why. And, <laughs> yeah, we always want to know why. And, and, you know, sometimes my, my response is that knowing why it, it doesn't matter, yeah. you know, but. But, you know, if you don't have an answer to your question just yet, yeah, then sit with it. Yeah, be patient, for sure. I used to have a, a, a teacher that said, you know, if you question why, you will never be satisfied. And as I started to, you know, uh, envelope my life around that, you know, I'd start finding myself like, I, I, I was able to shrug things off a little easier. You know, I was able mm-hmm. to be like, well, I don't know what this is for. You know, there's no sense in questioning it, you know, and um, it really does help kind of keep your mind quieter by by uh, just knowing that we don't always have the answers immediately when we want them. Right. And, and a lot of that goes into then just acceptance of our reality, mm-hmm. you know, that it, it just is. Now, you know, that's not an excuse or you know, a a failure to say, well, you know, I'm stuck. But what I'm just saying is that's where we need to start is this is what it is. This is what's happening or, or my circumstance. Right. Now, what do I need to do next? And the why question I think keeps us away from that taking the action for the next step. Yeah. Because if I'm in a situation that's not healthy for me and I keep asking why, 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 I'm not doing anything to get myself into a healthier situation. Yeah. For because sure. I'm stuck in trying to find the reason that I'm not in a healthy situation instead of working my way into the healthy situation. Right. And we always want to, you know, as humans, we always want more, better, different. Right. So mm-hmm. in, in that, I find that we're not being present. We're not presencing ourselves to, you know, where we're at. We're actually being either we're living in the past or, or we're trying to predict the future. And so what one thing I tell my clients is, is you can still be in the present and be forward thinking. You can still know what you want and not yet have it. Right. Um, and as long as you focus on where you're, con- where you're going, then you'll have that and, and you'll be able to, you know, obtain whatever it is, call it a goal, call it, you know, call it a hope, a wish or whatever. But, mm-hmm. but um, I feel like those are the kind of things that have helped elevate me through my life is, you know, that's what gives you the, what to go after, what, you know, knowing what you want, because every subject is two subjects, right? So the lack of, and what you want, that's Abraham Hicks. Right. That's totally not me. But, but it, it makes so much sense because if we're, we're stuck in the mud, if we stay in the past in those illusions and those stories and, you know, and, and living in the question, one of the other things I would consider is make sure you're monitoring those questions as well, because if it's, why am I so stupid or why am I so dumb? Everywhere in your circumstance, you're going to find out, oh, well, I just tripped up the steps or I spilled my wine on my boyfriend's pants or, you know, whatever it is that's going to make you feel bad about yourself because your brain wants to be right. You know, so you, you yep. have to have good questions to, to make sure that you're, you're, you're heading in the right direction. Yeah. And, and that's why I really like, and, and I've read this from many different people, um, you know, we are the creators of our thoughts. You know, that when you have a lot of these negative thoughts, like what you were just saying, we have to remember that 
we're the creators, which actually then implies two things. That one, if you created that thought, you can create a different thought. Right. So if you are saying to yourself, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, well, you can create a different thought that, you know, I'm not stupid, you know, I'm yeah. smart, I'm talented, whatever. Um, and on the other side, you could have the admittance that you could be wrong. So if I create the thought that I'm stupid, just because I created it doesn't mean that I'm right. Right. And, well, and we aren't our thoughts. Right. I think that we we all get caught up or have at one point in our lives yep. have gotten caught up in the fact that, like, these are the things I think about myself. But that must be who I am. Right. And, uh, you know, that if it doesn't serve you again, we'll talk about the muscle. It's a muscle. I, I tell people all the time when when I was learning and on my journey of self-love, I had to do affirmations and, and I had people laughing at me and it was like, that was fine. I, I handled it. I got through it, but I still kept doing those affirmations, even as foreign as they felt. They made me feel like they made me feel like I was being ridiculous. Right. Um, but the more I practiced believing, you know, this, I am smart, I am beautiful, I'm worthy, all those kind of things, the less foreign it felt. And then when somebody would say something to me that was off from one of those things that felt foreign because that muscle had shrunk mm -hmm. and I no longer thought those things about myself and was able to heal that part of me that, that needed their approval. Yeah, no, that, it's very true. And, and we need to work through that process um, because, you know, we, we are in our thoughts, you know, just because we're thinking them. Um, um, I always go back to, you know, being a kid. I mean, you know, what kid didn't believe that they were a superhero at some point? Yeah, I was no, wondering what. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, but I, I, I don't think you were able to fly or catch bullets or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> I thought I was a superhero, but if I jumped off the roof, I was going to go splat. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just because we're thinking this stuff. But it's interesting because, you know, people will laugh. They go, yeah, that's stupid, you know. But then all of a sudden when they think, you know, well, I'm ugly or I'm this or I'm that, you know, then what happens is, like, oh, well, I'm automatically believing that. Well, you, you, know, you know, it's funny that you say that because, and I'm going to just share something about myself. When I was young, I believed my family was the only family that passed gas. And I may have said this before, <laughs> but... I was so embarrassed when I finally found out that other people did it and relieved at the same time, because, you know, it is that kind of bodily fluid function that nobody really wants to, you know, hear or, you know, they keep secret or whatnot. But, but right. it's, it's amazing the things that we can create even from such a young age, um, you know, from, from what may seem like a very insig insignificant um, event that has happened. You know, um, right. I didn't get a doll when I was young. It was my sister's birthday and I didn't get a present when I was young. I ended up starting to get presents because I would ball my eyes out and I want a spoiled rotten little thing. But, but at the same time, you know, my parents wanted me to know I was love. And to me, that's how they showed it, you know? So mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's just amazing. And, you know, I would encourage everybody to start to question the beliefs that you hold and, and whether they're, they're, for your highest and best good still. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and that's where I think it, it, it is important where we can sit back and look at these non-judgmentally to really come up with, you know, what, what is the origin of this thought? Mm -hmm. And is there any credence to this thought? Which I think is very different than the why. You know, we're not saying, well, why am I thinking this? Right. I'm looking at it more of a learning aspect. You know, so what's the origin so that maybe I can make some changes if I need to? So let me ask you this, Chris, because, you know, a lot of people have very traumatic experiences. You know, they've, mm. they've really created a lot around a certain event. So how do you encourage them to um, kind of see their way through, through the smoke um, gently? You know, like, I mean, I, I would never say that whatever happened to somebody isn't meaningful and, and you know, uh, couldn't be something that was, you know, terrible yep. for them at that point. But my question would be, you know, how do you get them to maybe see a, a different possibility? Well, and I think, and, and you're right by gently and slowly, especially if we're talking about traumas, um, 
you don't want to open up the floodgates, you know, immediately. Um, but one of the things that I, I focus and we keep saying this, but the non-judgmental piece, yeah. because a lot of the trauma is the judgment that we're putting on the event that happened, mm. you know, to the person. And I'm not saying that's wrong. You know, that that's just what it is, you know, yeah, so we're, something we're happened to me, I put a judgment on it and now I'm feeling a certain way about it. So if we can remove that judgment we put on and look at it for what it is, then can we start taking that action itself and reworking it in our mind to begin to understand the action? Yeah. Not justify the action. Sure. Just to understand it. And, and I think that uh, some of the some of the things that um, have helped transition people that that I've known very well um, are kind of going from what I would call in. I would, I think most people would agree it's a victim mentality. Like somebody did something mm -hmm. to me, but that gives them power over you or over that circumstance. Exactly. And, and so um, stepping into an accountability, not as in I'm responsible for it or I did it, you know, but accountability, like how can I take my power back from that situation? You know, exactly. um, and that seems to be, um, Again, it's, it's, it's hard to see through the smoke sometimes when you're very deep in it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that if you, you, you take your power back and you start to create new meanings about the event when you do that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, most definitely. And, and, you know, that's the key to it. And, you know, when you look at what, by definition, what a victim is, once you have an ability, whether you believe it or not, but once you have an ability to change that situation, you're no longer the victim. Yeah. You know, sure. and, and I do believe that, that, you know, the longer that you believe in, in your own victimhood, the longer it's going to take you to heal mm -hmm. from whatever that trauma, it, you know, so, you know, when, when an adult says, you know, I, I'm a victim of, you know, something in my childhood. Yeah. You know, yes and no, because right now as an adult, one, it's not happening, and two, you have power now. Yeah. So you're not a victim now. You were back then, yes. Yeah. But see, oh, if you keep like saying that. you're a victim now, you know, then you get into this, well, I still have no control over it. I still have, but you do have control over now your thoughts about what happened to you from back then? Or you have the control over, am I going to forgive people or am I going to, you know, accept reality and move forward? Right. Whatever that may be. And again, there's no right or wrong in it. Yeah. But whatever it may be, see, that is your power and control. Yeah. And so you're think, not a victim. No. And I think that you said it, you hit the nail on the head, you know, as a child, you, you may have been, but mm -hmm. you're, when you're standing in your power and your accountability now as an adult, you get to, you know, look at things differently. You get to have a different understanding and it's not happening now. So since right. thankfully it's not happening to you now and you have the ability to protect yourself, um, then, you know, I don't want to say you can leave it in the past because it's always going to be your story. But Correct. At, at the same time, you can tell the story a different way. And, and that's the other thing that I think is very important is we never want to minimize no. what happened in the past or say, well, I just want to forget it. Yeah. That that's, you know, what happened makes us who we are today. Yeah. So what happened happened and let's try to see what we can take from that and move forward. Uh, so yeah, I've always told my clients that, that we're, we're not going to minimize anything or try to forget anything. Yeah. It's just, we're going to hopefully look at it differently. And when things pop up, they're not going to be haunting you. They're just going to be there as, yeah, that happened. Yeah. That's a part of me. Um, we have a saying in, in transformation in, in some of the courses that I've taken is the only way out is through. And so, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there, these are feelings that likely most people have just like stuffed, stuffed down in there for years and years and years. Exactly. And you, you, you get to experience those, you get to let them out, you get them to free them um, so that energy can move and so that trauma will be less for you. Um, 
again, never to minimize, but to allow it to just go, you know, where, where it needs to go and, and, Mm -hmm. um, and for you to release it. So you, what trust surrender and, and uh, acceptance. Yeah. You know, whatever it is that you need to do to be healthy, because now, you know, as an adult from a childhood trauma, you know, as an adult, you now have that ability to be healthy. Mm. But it's in, in how you're going to reframe what happened to you back then. How do you reframe that now? You know, so, and, and, and that whole thing with that empowerment. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a great idea, I think, for a listener challenge. Okay, yeah. cool. So I think that um, we don't realize what we're doing to, um, to judge anything that's happening in our circumstance, anything. And so I would suggest that you go one week for, you know, and noticing whenever you see or judge anything, you know, good, bad, right, wrong, whatever it is, I, I think that you, you know, like you, you notice that and you go through it as, as in, and whenever you notice that you've judged something, you say, just like me, because everything, everything that you, you know, it's a reflection of you. So, you know, mm-hmm. I might see somebody who, um, you know, I don't like the way they're driving Well, they're driving just like me, you know, and somewhere I need to clean that up. That's part of how we get rid of these illusions is by, you know, witnessing them, seeing that we're judging them and then cleaning up what we're doing. So then it's not affecting us anymore. I like it. Yeah. Something different, something different that, I mean, and, and again, it's, it's not to be harmful. It's not to put yourself down that you're, you're Mm -hmm. judging. It's to make sure that you start to clean up the thoughts and let yourself be a little bit more at peace by, um, by, by witnessing these illusions. The only way to stop a particular behavior or thought is to acknowledge it. Absolutely. So you're right. If if I'm spending a lot of time judging, then I need to acknowledge when I judge so that I can change that. So yeah, this is not a negative to the person. This is a let's heal, let's be healthier. Um, So yeah, but first we need to acknowledge it. Well, and, and the reason I say just like me is because in transformation, I'm sure you know as well, we say if you spot it, you got it. So if you, if you notice it about somebody else, oh, that person's being mean. Well, somewhere you must be being mean too because you couldn't spot it. It wouldn't trigger you. It wouldn't bother you if you didn't mm-hmm. have that action going on somewhere in your life, somewhere in your past, you know, somewhere that you have guilt that needs to be cleaned yep. up about it. Uh, exactly which is great food for reflection and thought. Um, and again, everything I believe, you know, the past is all of our education, you know, so we learn from the past. Amen. And if you look at the past without judging in and just to say, where can I learn from this? Um, positive or negative doesn't matter. But right. what do I learn from it? What do I take with me? Yeah. I think that was perfect. Absolutely. Well said. I like it. Yeah. This is a cool challenge. And, uh, you know, as always, we encourage everybody to, uh, you know, message us, um, use our social media and get on the websites and whatever, but, you know, share with us and share with all the listeners, um, you know, what, how you've worked that challenge and then we can all learn from each other. Yeah. And hashtag on finding peace. If you have anything you guys want to hear from us, we would love to, uh, you know, do a subject uh, or do a podcast based on the subjects that you guys are choosing. Yep. Most definitely. Yeah. So, yep. Sounds excellent. All right. Thanks so are for you going to enjoy everybody? the rest of your oh. <laughs> sunny day? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm going to actually probably go, go back inside and cool down a little bit because I'm sweating. <laughs> uh yes no i'm i'm a good 20 or so degrees colder than you are so yes you're enjoying it i can see (laughs) yes i am (laughs) all right well yes thank you to everybody for uh listening please spread the word and um you know like this podcast if, if that's something that you do and let people on your social media know what we're doing over here 
Yeah, absolutely. We really appreciate you guys listening. Have a great day. All right.